Hi, my name is Jerry Fowler and today's lesson is on how to place a rubber dam. By the end of this lesson, each student should be able to properly place a rubber dam. There are certain materials and procedures in dentistry that require a dry environment in order for them to work properly or function. And say if you have that patient in the chair that's a Juicy Lucy, so what do we do about that? We place a rubber dam. But uh, before we get started, um, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to have my assistant here uh, kind of help us and give us a demonstration on how to place that rubber dam. Stella's our assistant and, oh, excuse me, she's the world's best dental assistant. Okay, so Stella's going to help us out as we go along here. Now the supplies that you're going to need to place your rubber dam are going to be a mouth mirror, explorer, a Woodson or a beaver tail burnisher, cotton pliers, a rubber dam punch, rubber dam forceps, scissors, rubber dam frame, rubber dam clamp, rubber dam, and of course floss. First we need to prepare the rubber dam. So we start out with a stamped rubber dam. It'll have a little pattern like that. And we're gonna, for our purposes here, we're gonna isolate uh, tooth or teeth number 31 through 22 because the tooth that we're working on is tooth number 30. We always clamp the tooth just distal to the tooth that we're working. So if we're working number 30, in this case we'll be clamping 31. So when we clamp, or excuse me, when we punch the dam, we're going to use our rubber dam forceps and we're going to punch the dam for those teeth. And when you punch the dam, you make sure, and this is what it kind of looks like, that when you punch it, that you punch the hole all the way through and you pull it, the dam through the punch to ensure that you've got it all the way through with no tags. When you pan, uh, punch the tooth for number 31, the one that we're going to clamp, make sure that you use the largest hole size for that for that area. Okay, so once you get the dam all punched, the next step is to place the clamp inside the dam. Now our, our, our rubber dam clamp has this little loop here. That loop part is going to go towards the distal of that tooth. So if we're doing 31, we're just going to take that and push, put it through kind of by poking it this way. Poke it through, just like you see there. On the top image there. And then we fully engage it, that's how it's going to look. So the next step is we need to ligate that rubber dam clamp. And the reason is, if it pops off for whatever reason during our procedure, we don't want it flying off or flying down or possibly going the other direction, going down the patient's throat. So we take a piece of floss, we double it up, we put the looped end through that little uh, ring section. Then you're going to basically, you're going to tie a slip knot. So you're going to take the, uh, the free end of the floss, put it through your loop, and then pull it tight. Once you get it pulled tight, you're going to place that floss underneath the side of the frame that's nearest to the clamp. Okay, so we're almost ready. I'm so excited. Uh, the next step is you've got your clamp in place and it's ligated. Now, if you turn it over to the back side, it, you have the option of placing uh, some lubricant across those holes to make the dam pass more freely over the teeth. Then, after you do that, you're going to place the clamp actually on the tooth. So basically, you're going to take your rubber dam forceps, the there's two little prongs here that are going to fit, uh, fit into the holes on the clamp on both sides and you're going to place that on. In this case, it's going to be tooth number 30. Or excuse me, 31. I apologize. We're clamping 31. We're working on 30. When you pl uh, place the clamp on the tooth, usually we start on the lingual side uh, with placing the clamp and make sure that you don't impinge the gingiva, meaning put the clamp on the gingiva. We slide it right next to the gingiva, then you're going to slowly slide it over to the facial side and release it. Now if we do this on a live patient, you're going to make sure you ask the patient when you're doing this, 
Uh, I'm going to place the rubber dam on now. It's going to feel tight. If it pinches at all, raise your hand because normally the patient is numb during this procedure. If it's pinching, that means they're not numb enough and you need to let the doctor know that they need to give him more anesthetic. Okay, so now you have the dam engaged onto tooth number 31. And if you're doing this by yourself, I'm going to try to show you, and in most cases you will be, sometimes the doctor will be working with you, to make it easier for you, um, after you place your clamp on, you're going to go ahead and stabilize the dam by flossing that opposing cusp. And in this case, it's tooth number 22. You're going to floss the distal of uh, number 22. And then you're going to use a little piece of, it looks like rubber band, it's called a wedget and you're going to floss that on the distal of 22 right there. Now the dam is stabilized. Okay, now you're going to continue on by uh, pulling the holes over each individual tooth. And you get that, you go do that all the way across by isolating all the teeth and then you're going to follow up with flossing those contacts all the way down. Don't force the floss, we don't want to tear the dam. Just floss the contacts all the way down and the last step is we're going to invert the dam by tucking uh, the dam down towards the sulcus of the tooth. Well, you're going to use your beaver tail uh, instrument or your Woodson to do this. This is so it creates a nice seal. Once again, the whole reason for the dam is to keep the saliva out of your working environment. Once you have it all burnished, or excuse me, not burnished, but inverted, uh, then your final adjustments will be made uh, to the frame. And Stella, uh, that, this rubber dam frame is on upside down. You have to change that around, Stella. The curved part of this is going to go towards the chin, and these two open ends are going to go up towards the eyes. You're supposed to be the best assistant. Oh, here we go. This is the proper placement right here. Notice the uh, curved end is it goes around the chin, and the two open ends of the kind of the horseshoe of the frame, they go up towards the eyes. And right here, you see the final completed product. It's a piece of work there. It looks beautiful. Um, everything's all inverted, very nicely isolated. And voila, you're done. So what we're going to do now is we're going to step into the lab. I'm going to demonstrate placing the rubber dam on the typodont. And then each of you have the opportunity to place the rubber dam on the typodont, starting with the lower right, lower right quadrant.